Open Escal Conference Call. My name is Brandon, and I'll be your operator for today. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. Please note that this conference is being recorded, and I will now turn it over to you, Ellen Haley. You may begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. This should be a very entertaining call. I'm going to be very brief. We're here today to talk about this enormous fight that we have coming up on March 14th between Sergei Kovalev, almost known as Crusher, and Jean Pascal. Sergei is a WBO, WBA, and IBF light heavyweight world champion. And Jean Pascal, of course, is a light heavyweight former champion. We are also joined today by Kathy Duva, the CEO of Main Event. Agus Kalinas, who is Sergei Kovalev's manager. We also have John David Jackson, Kovalev's trainer with us. As well as Jean Bedard, the president of Intrabox. Greg Leone, CEO of Jean Pascal Promotion, is with us. And Mark Ramsey, Pascal's head trainer. All of those folks are available for you to ask questions of when we start the Q&A. We all know, of course, that this site will be part of a live triple header that will be televised on HBO World Championship Box, Boxing beginning 9.45 p.m. ET and PT. So without further ado, I am going to turn this call over now to my favorite leader, Kathy Diva. Kathy? Hey, Ellen. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, it's great to, uh, to see so many people on the call today, and um, I'm going to keep my, my comments brief. Uh, because we have lots of speakers and because I have a cold, so <clears throat> it may sound a little weird, but anyway, I'm feeling better than I sound. Um, this is a terrific fight, and I don't really think there's a whole, much, whole lot anybody can say to, 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 to embellish that. Uh, Sergey has always told me that he just wants to test his skill against the best, and um, he, he's getting the opportunity to do that on March 14th. Uh, Jean Pascal, the warrior, has has faced anyone that, that, that has stood in his path. Um, so what we have here is just a classic matchup between two guys who really want to fight each other, and that usually leads to the best. We also have a terrific undercard, um, which we will address on further conference calls, but basically um, we have a terrific fight on HBO in the United States, on Pinto View in Canada, and, uh, and, and uh, what can I say? If you love boxing and you live in the U.S., you have HBO, so you're going to get to see a great fight. And Kathy has uh, talked to us a little bit about this fight. Now let's have a little a couple words here from Joan Bedard. Thank you very much. So this will be, uh, again, for us, an epic fight between two of the best fighters of the light heavyweight division. Uh, we can already feel the excitement from Canadian boxing fans in Montreal. Can't wait uh, for that fight to happen. Uh, Jean Pascal is always uh, ready for a new challenge, and fighting Kovalev is right up there. The Russian-born champion will obviously not give up his titles easily, but uh, Pascal is ready to give him a good run for his money. I'm also uh, very happy and proud of the card we will be presenting on March 14th. In cooperation with the main events, we have put together one of the most exciting boxing cards i ever seen. I've seen for a long time. All of our fighters are ready to take up some big challenges, and fans have to be prepared for a great evening. This event on March 14 therefore promises to be a memorable evening in the box in Canadian boxing history. Uh, talking about a little bit about uh, Jean Pascal's team, Jean Pascal can count on an amazing team with Greg Leon as CEO of Jean Pascal Promotion, his coach uh, Mark Ramsey and Ross Amber, and the one and only Roy Jones Jr. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce a warrior that never backs down from a fight. Uh, I know I don't know if it's uh, Jean Pascal turn to speak, but uh, I just want to introduce you, uh, uh, the WBC light heavyweight world champion from 2009 to 2011, second in the world rankings with a record of 21, 29 wins, including 17 KOs in the. 33 fights. Uh, I'm uh, proud to present Jean Pascal, and uh, I'm uh, waiting to see all your uh, you guys. Uh, the biggest challenge that we have this time is uh, to uh, try to accommodate all the media around the world. We're used to have a big fight, a lot of fans, uh, but have uh, this kind of fight in Montreal, we're uh, very 
really happy and look forward to, for March 14th. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Sergey, would you like to say a couple words to all the wonderful people listening? This is Sergey. Sergey, what are you doing? Hello, everybody. I just want to say, everybody, hello, and uh, I'm waiting uh, March 14th, and already started to prepare uh, and waiting this day. This day for me means a lot because the first time defense took uh, my title. And uh, I'm sure that it will be a very great boxing day, very big show in Canada and uh, on Uh Welcome to Montreal, to the Bell Center, and welcome to TV and to lunch, HBO, and have fun. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sergey. No, Pascal. Yeah. Hey, Sergey. Yeah, um, hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Pierre. Uh, this fight, I think, is going to be a great fight. It's a, it's a classic. This is the best. This is the best. Uh, we are two great two warriors, and uh, Sergey thinks he's the best. I think I am the best, so that's why we're going to face so I to see who's the best. Uh, so we're going to have an epic night uh, in Montreal, March 14. And if you take a little bit about it, this fight remind me like Rocky IV, and I think it's going to be like a remake of the movie Rocky IV. You have the North American guy versus the Russian. So you got the East versus the West. You got Drago who killed Apollo Creed, in the ring. So the Kovalev did the same thing maybe a couple of years ago. So I am like a huge underdog like uh, Rocky was in the movie. Uh, the odds I think they like uh, four to one. So I think in this movie I'm not gonna be Apple to Creed but I'm I'm gonna be the black Agua. So um, I think like the fans need to show up because I'm gonna be a classic, I'm gonna be an epic match, and the spoke belt of the line, the WBC Diamond Bell, the WBA, the IBF, and the WBO. So, so the winner of this fight is gonna be the king of the division. So I can't wait for this fight. And you know, at the same time, I'm really, really glad uh, to give Kovalev his first real payday because I think he got like underpaid by his people because after like 33 fights, it's your real first payday. That's very, very sad. So I'm very happy to be able to make him, of course, a house. Uh, after his fight against Hopkins, I think he got like on here, on your case, something like that. And that's very, very bad for a champion of his caliber. So I think Kobe deserves way more money, a lot of money. So I'm very glad that I'm giving him this opportunity. Thank you. Okay, we can start the Q&A now, Brandon. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. We ask that you please limit yourself for two questions. If you wish to ask any further questions, please re-enter the queue by dialing star 1 again. If you wish to be removed from the queue altogether, please press the pound sign or the hash key. If you're using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset first before dialing the numbers. Once again, if you have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Please stand by for a moment while we assemble our queue. And from Marin, we have Mike Woods online. Please go ahead. Hey guys, thanks for taking the time to do the call. Appreciate it. A quick uh, bookkeeping and fact check question. This is for Kathy. Uh, John made an interesting comment. He's happy that uh, Dago to help uh, Kovalev get a great payday, his first real payday. And he says he thinks he made a hundred thousand dollars to fight Hopkins or something. I, 
you know, I don't always follow the numbers like that, but is, <laughs> is there any degree of, of, of realism to that, or what, what's up with that? You know, um, it means a lot more than 100,000 to fight Hopkins, um, but it is a good payday, and uh, one of the reasons Sergey chose to go to, to Canada was because it was a good financial opportunity there, but uh, he's, he's doing just fine. Nobody's going to have to hold any benefits for him. <laughs> No benefit concert for uh, old lips. Uh, yes. Sergey, question for you about John Pascal. He is a veteran, uh, solid guy, has some great wins. I am wondering if you perceive him to be, on paper, the toughest test of your career to this point.
late December of the no contest against Belante. It's only two rounds. And before that, you hadn't fought since January. So it's, it's really been quite a while off here. I know it's not entirely you know your fault. You wanted to fight uh, other fights, and it just didn't get worked out. But I'm wondering, uh, um, what is your point of view as far as whether a long layoff like that is good for you or not good for you or doesn't make a difference? I'm curious because, you don't, you know, other than when you had an injury, you weren't a guy that took off like an excessively long amount of time. Um, no, I think that's gonna. I, I don't think that's gonna affect me because it's been 18 years that I've been. I am in the boxing game. Uh, when people are boxers or athletes, you get rushed, been rushed. Uh, sometimes it's just to downplay the performance, or sometimes it's just because they are scared about the public. And me, I'm not scared about the public. I know I'm. I know I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna give my hundred percent. I know I'm gonna be sharp because, like I said, the. It's been 18 years, see, I'm doing it. So it's not because I took like a nine, nine months layup that's going to change completely my skills or my speed or not everything. So I'm very, very confident that uh, even though I made only two rounds with she December 6th, I'm going to be well prepared to have the W at the end of the night on my team. Right, my other question for you, John, and, uh, and I'll ask it a, a different way to, to Sergey, but... But we all know that you had your draw with Hopkins, and then you lost to Hopkins when you lost the title back in 2011. And then Sergey, just a few months ago, <laughs> shut Bernard out, knocked him down, totally dominated. That's your, you know, your one common opponent. I think there would be some people that say, "Boy, John Pascal, he lost to Hopkins, to Kovalev, to Hopkins easily." So, don't you think that Kovalev is going to beat Pascal? What's your your point of view as far as the the fact that you have that common opponent with each other, and 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 the way that the outcomes went? But, you know, we only have only one common property. Uh, yes, he fought uh, Bernard Kids. He did, he did a great fight against Bernard. He won against Bernard. But me, in my mind, that's what matters. And in my mind, I know I won both fights against Hopkins, even though on paper that he won the fight. But, but in my mind, I won those fights. Uh, those, those two fights. And also, earlier in my career, I fought Donald Bloom. And uh, and I whooped this guy in one fight, and it took Kovalev two fights to have a win, a good win, a credible win for the Donald Bogum. So I think that means a lot. So it's not only the Arkansas fight, but if you look at a Donald Bogum, uh, it took two fights to for the Kovalev to go over Donald Bogum, and also he got drops, I think, twice. Uh, I've never been knocked down in my whole career so that's why this fight is going to be interesting it's going to be a great fight and that's why I'm calling for an epic night on March 15th Alright John thank you very much for that uh, I would like also uh, uh, Sergey if he could uh, answer the question about does, does it in any way make you feel Sergey um, I don't know overconfident maybe because you beat Bernard Hopkins so easily uh, but Bajan had problems and lost one of the two fights true with him in the other one and then, as he mentioned, uh, you know, you had a tough time with Darnell Boone, a guy that he beat pretty handily. I mean, what's your what's your perspective about that, that the common opponents that you've had and how you did against them compared to the way John fought them? Uh, I don't have a question. He, as you say, it's easy to win with Darnell Hopkins. But John Pascal, he had a problem with Hopkins. Both of them. Соперник как Дарнел Бун, что у тебя были проблемы с ним, выиграть не мог в Атланте. А э, Жан Паскаль его выиграл очень легко в Канаде. А как ты можешь прокомментировать это? Yeah. 
you know, like, it's like, uh, what, what we see about the uh, Melbourne, about the uh, Pascal with the uh, Hopkins, Hopkins said that uh, Pascal said that problem, problem with the Hopkins, I won uh, Hopkins easy, but can be not easy fight with the against the uh, Pascal, you know. It's like uh, just a situation. For me, any fight was uh, a uh, street fight. Only with the rules. And for me, interesting too, what will be, uh, what will happen on uh, March 14th? Uh, I think so. Jean Pascal will be, will, will be still a problem. <laughs> Alright. Sergey, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know. From the main fight, we have Jeff Jeffrey online. Please go ahead. Uh, good, evening. Uh, good afternoon to both of you. I have a first uh, a question to Jean Pascal. I was wondering if I can ask him in French. Jean, yes. are you there? Yes, yes, Jean, yes. Okay. yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Jean, listen, do you think that your style is predictable and that your advantage against the Cavaliers? I think that no style is predictable. There's always a problem with any other style, considering that it's unpredictable and difficult to prepare. Contre un boxeur qui est imprévisible ou contre un adversaire qui est imprévisible. Alors, euh, contre n'importe qui sur la planète, je pense que mon style euh, peut, peut donner euh, beaucoup de problèmes. C'est un peu comme, euh, comme l'hiver au Québec, c'est imprévisible. Des fois, c'est chaud, moyen, cette année, c'est super froid. Alors, mon style, c'est un peu comme l'hiver du Québec, imprévisible. Et un euh, quoi tu sur euh, l'état mental récent que euh, j'ai parlé à Bernard Hopkins? Bernard Hopkins te favorise pour le combat. Qu'est-ce qu que ça te fait de savoir ça? Ah, sincèrement, moi, euh, je ne suis pas sur les commentaires des gens, sur les opinions des gens. Moi, je me concentre sur, sur mes aptitudes à moi, sur qu ce que je peux faire, sur qu ce que je peux contrôler. Euh, oui, il y a plein de gens, il y a plein d'experts qui disent que je suis en dedans, je le négligé. Bernard Hopkins me considère comme le favori, mais tout ça va se régler le 14 mars sur le ring. Et euh, une autre euh, question rapide, est-ce que tu veux conserver le surnom du Black Rocky? Parce que tu n'as pas de surnom. Euh, du Black Barbois, ben ça... Du Black Barbois, euh, oui. Du Black Barbois, ça dépend si les gens trouvent que ça se bien à ce passage, j'ai aucun problème. Mais c'est sûr que je ne suis pas le genre de personne qui va me donner mon propre surnom. Mais si les fans... Euh, si, si, les, si le Black Barbois est John Bedard and John Pascal, would you please give us that translation in English? And I would ask that as speakers, you will allow John Bedard to translate for us so the rest of us can know what it's getting talked about as well, okay? So you want to admit the translation? Well, there was uh, three questions. The first one was, uh, does uh, Jean-Pascal think that his uh, style, which is not a, <coughs> it's, it's a special style, could make problems to Kovalev? So that's uh, what the first thing Jean-Pascal thinks, that his style can be a could cause problems to uh, any boxer in the world. And uh, the second question was, uh, Do you think that it's a good idea that uh, your nickname could be uh, Black Balboa? So basically, Jean said that uh, he's not the one that he will give him uh, a nickname. That's the fans that will give uh, give him uh, a nickname. So basically, there there was two questions. Okay. If you can translate one, everyone as they come in, that'd be wonderful. Thanks. Okay. From QMI Agency, we have Benoit Lu on the line. Please go ahead. Hi, my question is for uh, John David Jackson. I just want to know if something is different in uh, Sergey's preparation for Jean Pascal. And uh, just few words, uh, how can you describe uh, Jean Pascal like a boxer? Uh, as far as preparation for this particular fight, every fight is different. Every fight is different. So preparation for every fight is also different. Um, certain things that we we're doing for this fight that we'll prepare for uh, John Pascal. So, uh, can I answer that question for you? Everything is different from this, this camp than it was the last camp. Uh, as far as uh, John Pascal, the fighter, uh, you mean you can't you, you can't sell John lightly. You can't you can't sell him. You can't give him you know lightly or sell him short. He's uh, he was champion for a reason, and you have to give it just to. Sergey prepares for every fighter and taking John the same way. And, you know, and John's a champion with the challenger and we can get that title. Because those are belts are very important to Sergey. And, you know, that's why he came up. And there's still one more belt that's left for him to get. So until he gets that last belt, and he and after he gets it, he's on a mission. So the fact that, uh, you know, Pat feels good. He, he, you know, he's a very good fighter, uh, very intelligent, uh, has a uh, good power. 
Yeah, our position is that they cover the champion of the world and he will choose the protocol or we won't do it. From Montreal Gazette, we have Herb Zerkowski online. Please go ahead. Hi, right, thank you very much. Uh, this question is either for Jean, uh, Jean Pascal or, or Mark Ramsey if he's on the call. I'd just like to know, uh, just bringing up the speed on, on the training regimen, where you went, uh, how you have uh, proceeded uh, with this fight, if we are to agree, Jean, that this is going to be your uh, toughest challenge, even tougher than, than Hopkins. Uh, are you preparing uh, any differently? So just basically where, when, uh, why, and how you have been preparing for this fight. Hi, Herb. It's Mark Ramsey. Uh, Hi, Mark. I, I, actually, we did two weeks training, uh, pre training camp in Montreal. We did four weeks uh, in Las Vegas, and right now we are in Big Bear, California, for the, the, the last three weeks and a half uh, before the fight. Uh, it's sure that when you... Everybody uh, already heard that story about we have our best training camp, but when you fight somebody of the uh, boxer for the quality of uh, Sergei Kovalev, you have to step up as a trainer, as a boxer, and this is exactly what Jean Pascal is doing right now. And uh, I'm very comfortable with the, the, the beneficiation with the, the training camp, and I'm very comfortable also with the, the fight right now. Thank you. Fightkings.com, we have George Hanson on the line. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, this question is for John David Jackson. Uh, first, I just want to congratulate you for being elected into the Pennsylvania Boxing Hall of Fame. I don't know why it took so long. Uh, listen, when you have great trainers like yourself who are great fighters, there's a tendency to want to embed your style and how you fight into your fighter. How have you been able to... Uh, would actually curb that tendency working with Sergey because I look at your fights and I look at Sergey and you two are going two different fighters. Yes, um, you know, well, you know, actually, that's a problem sometimes, uh, and they don't fall for a lot of trainers. They try to take the time they have as, as a fighter and have to acquire the training fight the way they fight. Um, uh, Sergey, you know, uh, my, 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 the way my belief is I let every fighter be himself. I work off what he does best and try to prove him as, as a fighter all around. You know, Sergey is a tremendous fighter. He's, uh, his guy's power is up real in boxing. So, why, why would I try to change that? You know, I, I'd be crazy to try to change that and make him become an uh, all around boxer. Sergey has great boxing skills. So, what I do is I don't really demand much of Sergey as far as trying to fight the way I fought. I just let him work on what he does, and I, I had small things along the way, and what, what, what happens is, he didn't realize that a lot of things that I, that I show him, they began to work for him his way, without me trying to implement them, or, or the manner that he fights for what I did. His defense is, is very, you know, there's a lot of boxing still he isn't very huge yet. You know, people thought, you know, he can go 12 rounds, he's proven them wrong. 12, you know, good rounds. He outboxed the match, the box, the amount of He took him to and then kind of beat him at his own game. You know, uh, the power's there, and, and, and uh, I'll probably stay, I mean, that's that, but they just signed out that night. You know, how strong he really is. So with me, I, 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 any fighter, I don't really try to uh, take what I do as a fighter and uh, make them the same way. I just implement certain things that allow them to learn the way in which I fly to a degree and let them slowly contribute for themselves, feel comfortable with that stuff. And then they will, as time goes on, gradually begin to fight in a certain way where some of the things that I did is they do, you know, but in order to be uh, a good a fighter and, and hopefully great fighter, you have to have the style that works for yourself and, and, and maybe some of the things that your trainer shows you, you might work them into your arsenal and then, you know, make them work in, in, a, in, a, in a good way. But with Sergey, I, I just don't, I just let him do this thing and, and I want to feel comfortable with what he does and I show him things, but I don't show him in a way that, that, that is demanding. I, I, I do it in a way which over time, he just begins to slowly seep into his, his, his arsenal, and then it works for him. And, and as you said, Bernard Hopkins, he, 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 he did his thing. He, he, he painted his way in. He jabbed his way in. He did certain things that, that took Bernard out of the game, and it worked for him. And, and those type of things that I worked on him with. So, you know, he, he's a tremendous talent as it is. So, to answer your question with him, and most part of that, I, I, let them, I let them do what they do best. And I, I work things slowly into their arsenal so they can become better fighters. Okay, thank, thank you. My last question is for Jean Pascal. What did you see in 
that fight. I know you're considering yourself lucky in, in this upcoming fight. What did you see in the Hopkins fight that has you excited uh, that you can exploit against Sergey Kovalev? Honestly, to be able to achieve nothing. Because Kovalev did a great job against Hopkins. But uh, nobody's perfect. Everybody got flaws. And, and me, that's one, of, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to fight Kovalev. Because he showed that he can go 12 rounds. He's a great boxer. And me, I'm a man, but you know, I'm an athlete of challenges. I love challenge. And uh, Kovalev is a great challenge for me. So that's why I decided to, to take the fight. Thank you. From Real Combat Media, we have Terrell Mann on the line. Please go ahead. Hi, this um, question is for um, Sergey Kovalev. Um, now, we know that you're fighting Jean Pascal right now, but let's just say, I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but looking at the fact that the WBC has made um, basically the winner of this the mandatory, will you be going directly after that or possibly um, going after maybe your WBO, WBA, or IBF mandatory?
we have Dr. Khan on the line. Please go ahead. Hi, no one to say. Uh, my first question is for Sergey. Sergey, uh, 2014 was a great year for you. This is a great way to start out 2015. You know, prior to your fight with Bernard Hopkins, a lot of critics believed you were just a KO puncher. And fans started to expect KOs. You know, that puts a lot of pressure on a fighter. Now that, you know, you've proved that you are the complete package and you have the complete skill set, is there a lot of that pressure off of you where you can perform in the ring more relaxed? Because, uh, you know, getting Golovkin, who has a similar reputation to what you had before the Hopkins fight, has suffered a lot of criticism for taking so long to be Martin Murray. Do you feel better now that, you know, you can go in there and you don't feel the need to perform to please the fans and you can just be yourself in the ring and do your job? Demands. They said they had no problem with drug testing if we agreed to pay for it. 
we agreed to pay for it, then it became company specific. Why did it have to become company specific if we were paying for it? I could answer every question you have with a question, we'll just answer around in circles. Okay, from TVA Sports, we have Matthew Bedard online. Please go ahead. Hi, it's more of a French uh, question, so uh, I don't know if uh, there was more English question before. I can take my time and just wait at the end. Or maybe if you want it. Go ahead and then John Bedard will translate for us if you're going to speak in French, okay? Okay, no problem. Uh, pour la question pour uh, Jean-Pascal. Salut, Jean, ça va bien? Ça va bien, merci, toi. Oui, super. Jean, ta petite approche de ce combat-là, on est même pas à deux semaines de ce face-à-face-là contre Kovalev. Comment tu sens sur ton entraînement à Big Bear? T'es-tu en pleine forme? Comment ça se passe pour toi? Euh, c'est en grande forme. Euh, c'est une petite technique que les boxeurs disent que c'est toujours le meilleur comme entraînement en carrière. Mais je pense vraiment que j'ai vraiment monté mon niveau d'adversité. Euh, mon niveau de chenille est un grand pendant ces entraînements-là. Je suis fier de moi, mais pas juste moi qui a monté un niveau de grand. C'est toute l'équipe euh, qui est passée. Alors, euh, on est vraiment sur la bonne voie. Et je suis vraiment excité de revenir euh, le 14 mars pour compter les fans euh, à Montréal. Okay, the first question from Mathieu was how uh, feel Jean Pascal two weeks uh, before the fight. So basically, Jean said that he feels very uh, proud of uh, what his team and him did during uh, his training camp, and he uh, very excited about uh, coming back to Montreal to uh, to feel fight week and then uh, the fight. Uh, Last question in French, euh, une dernière question française pour Jean Bédard. Jean, euh, je veux savoir comment aller la vente des biens euh, présentement en vue de ce combat-là. Est-ce que vous avez un chiffre à nous donner? Yeah, like, uh, the, en fait, je vais te le dire en français, mais je l'ai parlé au début, là, je dirais que euh, on, euh, on, ça leur décollé, je dirais, depuis à peu près une semaine. On a eu un très gros départ juste avant les fêtes. Et là, je dirais que ça, ça roule bien. Euh, on vise 12 000, je souhaite So the question of Matthew was again, again about uh, the crowd. So basically, it's the same answer that I did in my uh, comments. My in the first question was uh, what we expect about uh, attendance and what uh, what we hope for that fight. Saying basically that we think that the next two or three weeks will be uh, very busy. And, uh, we hope to have uh, between 12 and 15,000 in the Bell Center. From Fight Hub TV, we have Marcos Villegas on the line. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, uh, this question, yes, uh, this question is for Jean, actually. Jean, what do you make of uh, the whole situation with the testing? Uh, it's been covered a lot on this call. What's uh, your uh, the whole situation right now is behind me. I want to make the best in the world that I have a clean fighters, that Kovalev is a clean fighter as well. But the most important thing is we are in the clean sport because I really, really believe in the clean sport. And uh, I wanted to show the world that we champions, but we clean at the same time. But we have some issue with the with the Kovalev camps. So right now, I'm not worried about anything. I'm just focusing on my task. And my task is to train well and win the fight on March 14th. But in any way, are you disappointed? Of course I am. Of course I am. But like I said, uh, when, when you have nothing to hide, you take the test. And you don't come up with like a specific agency to make the test. Why do why you want to have a specific agency to make the test when you know I'm the one who's paying for it? You're not paying for it. I'm the one who's paying for it. And me, if I can step, I can do like with any any agency in the world, they can make the test on me. I don't care. But why cover the thing when it's uh, with only one specific agency? So, but it is, it, it is what it is. And right now, I'm just uh, moving forward, and I just hope that the uh, Kabbalah is clean. Now, I'd like to put this to rest once again.
and for all for the cover of side. He is clean. He's quite clean. He was willing to take a test at Vada. The only agency that's ever actually uh, reported anyone having taken drugs and having them been uh, penalized for it in boxing. So, um, he was willing to go to that agency, which is above reproach, and for some reason, the Pascal people who were told they could go to any agency they wanted, but that Sergey was going to go to the one that he knew was of the highest uh, caliber and without any, any, any clouds or questions about whether it reported the, pro- the, 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 the results properly or took the test properly, he was willing to go to that agency. They said no. End of story. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Scotty, Scotty, eh? Sushibada only do boxing. Me, I was willing to do like any agent who's doing like Olympic things on any athlete, not only boxing. But only like recognized by certain people in boxing. They, they have no credibility. They have no credibility, Bada. So please don't, 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 don't use that as an excuse. Please don't say Bada has no credibility. Bada has no credibility. Only that's boxing. That's his that stuff. They don't get any other support. Me, I was willing to do with a real agency who said she was about to, who was capable to test any any sport in the world. So, so with that further bullshit, just like leave it alone because they're not credible because they only test boxers. That's the alpha and plus brothers with Mr. Conte. Mr. Conte is with We're gonna leave it alone. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, um. leave <laughs> From FreemoreRounds.com, we have Ramon Aranda online. Please go ahead. Hey, everybody. Uh, question for Jean. Um, I recently went back to watch your fight with uh, Boutte again. I thought you looked about as good as you've you know, looked in, in quite a while. Um, Boutte, as we all know, and you know, not sure how he came into the fight after his initial first loss to Fox, but nonetheless, Butte is a very hard puncher that moves relatively well. Uh, maybe not the fastest guy in the world, but definitely has a lot of power. Um, Kovalev, as we know, is another guy with, with a lot of knockout power. So do you feel that perhaps your uh, your movement uh, and your speed would, will ultimately give you the advantage against Kovalev, or is there anything else in your game that you feel uh, matches up well with, uh, with Sergey? Um, before the Hopkins fight, Everybody was thinking that Kovalev was only a power punch puncher, but he showed that he can punch as well. Um, we know that Kovalev can bang. We know now from the Hopkins side that he can punch. Uh, and you know, on my side, that we know I can bang as well. We know that I can punch. So that's why this fight is very interesting fight because Kovalev is a power puncher. I never seen that down in my life. So that's why, like, even though I'm huge on the dog in this fight, nobody can predict for a fact the result of the fight. All right, and then a question for Kovalev, and this actually goes back to the Hopkins fight as well. I think, uh, you know, many, many folks felt that Hopkins had a very good chance of, of winning the fight based off the fact that he's such a good counterpuncher. Um, and I think myself included thought you would come in, you know, aggressively as the harder harder puncher and uh, perhaps follow Hopkins around. Um, however, as we all know, uh, you actually let Hopkins come to you many times and sort of you know, flip the script on him. Um, going into the fight, was that something that was, was pre-planned uh, and that you would let Hopkins be the aggressor? Um, is this something that you might be looking to do as well against Pascal? <laughs> I'm not going to say what I should to do against myself because 
like, <laughs> you understand why? And uh, what? What mean about the uh, question? The uh, it's just uh, like uh, yeah, they had uh, some strategy for the fight, but uh, you already getting strategy. Uh, main strategy, you know, like, first of all, in in, in, in the fight. Uh, because uh, if your opponent uh, is fighting how is your plan, it's okay. But if not, you, you should uh, think uh, something new, you know. I have uh, some plans for the fight, but I, I thought uh, from, the, from the situation. Uh, the run happens uh, for me. And uh, made uh, counter attack, you know, like stretch touch after my attack. And I saw this and I felt this. And I did uh, what I can to do. What I can, what I can to do, I did it. And it uh, looked very, very impressive and very smart. What I can do also for this fight, for this question. So from ring, we have my voices that come like the two. Uh, uh, Jacob. Yeah, I'm sure, 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 I'm And then, 
gonna go after the world. Okay, thanks, Sean. There's a KO Digest. We have Jeffrey Freeman online. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for putting me on the call. Just a couple of questions for both boxers. Uh, I want to start with Sergey Kovalev, if I could. Uh, Sergey, congratulations on the birth of your son, Alexander. Uh, I was wondering, how, how do you guard against the complacency or the distractions that can sometimes come with new fatherhood?